Hello, welcome to Deaf Bible Study this week. It's been a long time since we met the last time. We are back to our series on the Sermon on the Sermon on the Mount. And uh, I hope you will have your Bible open to the New Testament book of Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. And we are going to look at the next part of verses. Uh, this will be a short lesson today, I think. Uh, we just have a few verses, uh, verses to cover. But they're important, as are all of the verses in the Bible. Uh, how many of you have... Uh, you're driving and you're in a hurry. Maybe you're late for an appointment and <clears throat> you're hurrying and hurrying. And all of a sudden, you, you see this sign that says four or five. But you're in a hurry and you've got to, you've got to get there on time. And uh, before you know it, you have gone a little bit past the four or five. And then all of a sudden you see the lights behind you. Oh. And then the man, the nice policeman comes up to your window and he looks in at you and he says, do you know why I have pulled you over? <laughs> oh, no, no. Uh, not that I'm speaking from experience. Well, yes, I, I am speaking from experience. I'm sorry. Uh, but... I know that feeling in my heart when the law, when I disobey the law and the policeman catches me. You maybe have felt that in a schoolroom before when you were doing something wrong and you got caught by the teacher. You thought nobody saw you, but the teacher saw you. We have laws for a reason. Laws have been given to us to help us to do the right thing. Amen? They're good. And we need to obey the laws for sure. And so Jesus talks today in our story about that very topic of the law and what is our responsibility as Christians to that law. We're going to see it very clearly. Uh, Jesus t teaches very clearly. And really it's a blessing to me to see what Jesus said here in Matthew chapter 5, we're going to be looking at verses uh, 17 through 20. In, in Matthew chapter 5, Matthew chapter 5, verse 17, we'll begin and we'll go through verse 20. Just, just four verses today. Uh, it's going to be a short time, I think, but uh, maybe it'll be not short. We'll see. But let's pray and we'll, we'll get started. Our Heavenly Father, we're thankful today that we have you to give us a law. You have given us this Bible. It's filled with truths. It's, it's filled with laws. What for? Not to bind us and to make us feel uh, limited. No. You gave us these laws here in the Bible to help us to live right ways and to, to really to live in a way where we will be successful and we will know your blessing. You have things that are right and things that are wrong, and we want, we want to learn those things. And so we pray that today, <clears throat> as we look at this topic of the law and the Christian, that we will see our responsibility from the teachings of Jesus. Thank you. I'm thankful that Jesus included in this Sermon on the Mount these important verses. And I pray that you would help us today to see them clearly, and not just to see it and hear it, but to obey, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to get started. I want you to see that some of the people that Jesus had the most problems with were who? The religious leaders, the Pharisees, the Sadducees. And the scribes, all through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Jesus struggled with this group of people. And we're going to see why today, part of why today. Um, but I want you to see that Jesus, many times, these people said, Oh, Jesus, you are a rebel. You are a rebel against the law. 
And that was not true. That was not true. You're going to see it very clearly today because Jesus is going to explain himself in verses 17 through 20 uh, for you, for me, for them to be able to understand what was the motivation of Jesus with these laws. Well, let's begin. We're going to look at verse 17 to start. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 17, again, remember that Matthew 5, 6, and 7, all three chapters, Jesus is the speaker. Uh, no, no other person is speaking, only Jesus. And Jesus says in verse 17, Think not that I am come here to destroy the law or the prophets, the teachers of the past. I am not come to destroy but to finish or fulfill, to, to do, to obey all of the law. Now, when Jesus made that statement, he was saying something to these men that really it bothered them. Why? You would think, oh, that, that's a good statement that Jesus came not to destroy the law, but to do the law. But they had a problem. Why? Well, you see, these men had developed 613 extra laws, not from the Bible, not from the inspiration of the Holy Spirit of God, not from God's heart to their hand, no, from their heart to their ha hands, they made these laws additional 613 if you have read the last book of your Bible, Revelation, and you have read chapter 22, the last few verses, John warned the people, do not add to this book, the Bible. Don't take away from this book, the Bible. If you do, you are in danger. In reality, these religious leaders had added to the Word of God. 365 negative laws, 248 positive laws they'd added. Did, did, did God need them to add to the law? Where Was the law not enough in the Bible? No, the law in the Bible was perfect. What God wanted to be included was here. What they added here is not Bible. And do you know what happened? Jesus shows up here and he's doing this. Everything in the law, Jesus is perfectly obeying, following, and doing. Everything over here does not match with what Jesus is doing and saying and living. These 613 laws, extra added laws, not from God, but from men, Jesus did not follow them. So their problem with Jesus is Jesus showed up here. He's doing this. He's obeying the law, everything, and it makes us look bad because we're not doing this law. We're focused on these things that are not in the Bible. And so when Jesus is teaching, it's powerful, has authority. People are drawn to Jesus' teaching. It does, not, it does not agree with their six, 613 laws. And so they're bothered. They have a problem. This Jesus is a problem for us. But I want you to see what Jesus says about the law of God. This. By the way, I'm going to tell you today, the law in the Bible is good. Everything is perfect in there. Many people say, oh, I don't live under the law. No, thankfully, we live in the time of grace. But the laws that are here are good. And they were given to us by God to help, help us to live well. And it would be good for us to study the laws of the Old Testament um, Jesus, well, Jesus is going to explain it better than me, all right? So let's keep on going. Jesus gave a very, very strong statement. Look with me at verse 18. Jesus says, 
and I'm going to explain some of the words, okay? It will help you to understand it clearly. He said, for verily, this means truly, I say unto you, until heaven and earth pass one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass away from the law until all be fulfilled. This is a very strong statement. I want to explain two of the words to you, jot and tittle. Uh, it's, it's hard for us to understand, but every Jewish person that was seated there on that hillside knew exactly what Jesus was talking about. A jot and a tittle were marks when a person would, would write in the Hebrew language. They were normal marks that they would put on the, on the uh, scrolls or the paper. So let me explain what they are for you today. What is a, a jot? What is this? Well, it's simply this. It's a small, small mark. Kind of like if we use an apostrophe here. When we say we are, we are, we, we shorten it to we're. We put this in here. That's kind of the same thing in English that this is in Hebrew language. Okay? Make sense? So what is a tittle? That's this. They almost look the same, this and this. However, there's a little bit of a difference, this little bump here. Just that little tiny. So this, this mark really is like just small. This is a part of that. They're very small. So what was Jesus saying? Well, I want you to think about it. Je Jesus was saying, go back and see. He says, for verily I say unto you, until heaven and earth will pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law until all be fulfilled. What is Jesus saying? Even these very small marks, everything in the law, every letter, every word, every sentence. By the way, I'm going to tell you, this book is so precious. We have the words. We have, we have thoughts. We have sentences. We have uh, periods and colons and semicolons and all of these things, all of those things, God breathed them onto the pages so we could have his thoughts, his words for us to hold. You know, I hope that tomorrow you go to church and you, you take your Bible with you. This is an amazing book. And he's saying to us, everything in that book will happen exactly the way God said it would happen. Now, I'm going to say to you, 613 extra laws, I don't even know what they are. They are not as important as this Bible. Why? Those 613 laws that the religious leaders invented are man-made and they're weak. But the Word of God, every jot, every tittle, Every part of the Bible, every specific mark in that Bible, God placed where he wanted it. And what, G what Jesus is saying to us is that every law in the Bible, the laws are more important than a jot or a tittle, right? These are, these are just part of that law. But the law itself is important to God. And Jesus said, all of that law will be finished, will be obeyed before, before, it's going to, before the end of time. Can any person obey all of the law, all the, spe all the specific things? Only the person who spoke this verse. Only Jesus can. And Jesus did. Jesus obeyed every, every small part of the law. 
Jesus followed this Bible, all the Bible. Jesus obeyed, followed, lived, and showed for all the world to see. Jesus is the person who fulfilled the law. He finished it. He showed us the way. And I want to say that, um, well, let me ask you a question. Because I've heard people say to me many times, oh, I believe if I obey the Ten Commandments, I will go to heaven. Is that why God gave us the Ten Commandments? So we could go to heaven through the Ten Commandments? No. God knew before he gave the Ten Commandments to Moses there on Mount Sinai, God knew we, all of us already, had broken his laws. And it was not possible for us to do all Ten Commandments. However, the Ten Commandments have value. What? If we would follow and live and behave in line with the Ten Commandments, we would be blessed people. We would not steal. We would not lie. We would not do adultery. We would not uh, worship false gods. We would honor Father. You get the idea. Those Ten Commandments are good. There's nothing wrong with them. But following them is impossible for a sinner like you and like me. However, Jesus was not a sinner like you and me. And Jesus followed all Ten Commandments and did perfectly, not only those Ten Commandments, but all of the Old Testament commandments Jesus followed. Jesus obeyed the Spirit of God's law perfectly in every way. Jesus showed us and the people there what, what God's purpose was for giving us the Ten Commandments to show us the way to live. And Jesus did not only show us those Ten Commandments, but he went far beyond them. And we'll see some of that in this Sermon on the Mount as, we, as, it, as it comes alive for us. We'll see it a little bit later. So the truth is that the law was given to us so that we would see where we fall short. We, we cannot reach the perfection of God. The laws of God show us our failure and our need of a Savior. It should also show us that the only person who can follow and did follow the laws of God, who? Jesus Christ. He's the only one. And so even the law should show us that God made a way through Jesus Christ. He's the only one who can forgive sins because Jesus is the only perfect human being to live here on the earth without sin. Uh, let's go to the next verse, verse 19. <clears throat> Jesus, still speaking, sa says, Whosoever, therefore, shall break one of the least of these commandments shall teach men also. He shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in heaven the kingdom of heaven. Now, don't forget, Jesus is still speaking with those religious leaders there, and he's speaking to them. And he says to them very pointedly, but by the way, he's speaking to us today too. He speaks to those leaders and he says, if you know the law and you don't teach the law, you are least in the kingdom of heaven. But if you know the law and you teach the law, then you will be great in the kingdom of heaven. What is he saying to us? He's saying there, there's, there's not one person who has not broken these laws, as he says up here. Anybody that's going to break one of, of these commandments, that's all of us except Jesus. All of us have broken those commandments. So what is he saying? Jesus makes it clear that every person needs to pay attention the only one who could be called great in the kingdom of heaven down here is who? Jesus Christ. All of us are these up here. But Jesus is this person who not only taught the law, but followed 
lived and did not break one of those laws. So Jesus is saying to the people there, I want you to see my life. I'm going to live in front of you. You watch, you can, you can examine my life. You're not going to find a fault with me. You can examine me, you can test me, you can try to trick me, which they did that all the way through Jesus' ministry life. He said, you can try that, but I am following the laws of God. So Jesus made it very, very clear. The only person who can match this verse here at the bottom is Jesus himself. So let's go uh, to verse 20, the last verse we'll look at today. He said, for I say unto you that accept your righteousness. Now, he's not focused on those leaders. Now, he's looking at the general people who are there. And he says, for I say unto you that accept your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of those scribes and Pharisees. Ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. What is Jesus saying? We have to be more following the law more than these, those men? No, that's not what he's saying. Jesus is saying, and remember, the, the average person who's listening to Jesus understands, boy, those guys have invented 613 additional laws. I cannot match them. But you see, those men, those religious leaders had made their laws their idols, their gods. They were not from God. They were from their own hearts, their minds. They were, remember I told you, they were, they were man-made. They were weak, had no authority. And Jesus was saying to the, to the people here, don't follow that. Don't follow the people who have invented laws. You focus on the laws of God and God will take care of you. However, it is also with the understanding that none of us can keep and obey all of the laws. So what was Jesus teaching? Well, there's a few verses that I want to just share with you as we close today <clears throat> that, are, that are very, very important. By the way, those religious, those religious leaders needed to learn these verses too. But you and I need to really focus on these verses today. It says in, in Romans chapter 3 and verse 10, there is none righteous, no, not one. There's not one person that you know, that I know, who has lived without sin. All the people that I have met in my life for the last 66 years of my life, and if I were to live 66 years in the future, all of those people would have the same problem, all of us, are sinners. There's not one who, who is righteous in themselves. Another verse a little further down in verse 23 of Romans chapter 3 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You see, there's no person that you know or I know or that Jesus was speaking to there on the mount. None of those people was perfect. Only Jesus. Let me show you another one from the Old Testament. In the book of Psalms, 142, verse 3, he said, it says, The Lord looketh down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there be any that did understand and seek God. Sad verse, verse 3. They are all gone aside. They are all together become filthy. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Sounds like Romans chapter 3, verse 10. God looked down from heaven. He's looking for a righteous person all through, the, all through history, past and the future, and he sees none. Let me give you another one. I, I love this one from Ezekiel. I've shared this verse with you before. Ezekiel chapter 22, verse 30. The Bible says, God speaking, he says, I sought for a man among them that should take up the hedge and stand in the in the the gap before, before me for the land that I should not destroy it, but I found none. What is God telling us and what was Jesus teaching about the law? Well, he was teaching us that the law is good, 
helps us to see what is right and wrong, but the law cannot forgive your sins. Only Jesus Christ can. When God looks down through all of the people who have lived here on the earth for all those many, many years, he found not one person except Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is perfect, pure, holy, and righteous. But all the other people, all the other people who have lived here and died, every person has been a sinner, including the religious leaders, including me, including you. So I want, you, I want to emphasize with you uh, tonight as we close Jesus started this part of this, the Sermon on the Mount speaking about the value of the law. He then, then he showed them that the value of the law was to show us our sin. Not to save us, but to show us where we have, where we have, we have made a mistake after mistake after mistake to show us our sin. So this is a great truth for us to learn tonight. Jesus took time while he was pre teaching, preaching there on that mount. He took time to explain the purpose and the value of the law. He also took that time to destroy the idea that obeying the law, the Ten Commandments or the 613 additional commandments they had invented, that that could save a person. It cannot. And it's still the same today. It's good for us to know those Ten Commandments and to follow. They're good. They're good guardrails for us to stay in the middle. But those things cannot save us. All they can do is show us our sin. And all of us have sin. There's none righteous. No, no, not one, including you and me. So we should thank God for Jesus Christ tonight. And, and we'll do that as we close in prayer. Let's close. Heavenly Father, we're thankful that we have the whole Bible to teach us. This is your precious law. All of them are here. And you've given them to us to help us to behave correctly. However, we also understand that those laws show us we cannot be perfect, pure, or holy. We are thankful Jesus Christ is and was perfect, pure, and holy. And that he, Jesus, came to replace us on the cross to die for our sins. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Help us to remember that we, all of us, no matter how religious we seem, we are all the same sinners who need Jesus. Help us be good testimonies this next week, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Thank you so much for watching. And I hope to see you next week.